This is part three of Data Bank Basic Training, and we are continuing on talking about the relationship feature. You can add a relationship um, with somebody who's not yet in your data bank who you want to create a record for. And to do that, you're going to type in the person's name here. So let's say that we're going to put in a Laura sample. You can put in a company name and also choose if you want them to have the same address as the current member and then click Add Member. And just like before, it's going to have us define the relationship type. So we could say that, again, that they're family members. And maybe we'll say that Jim is the parent and that Laura is the child. And then we'll click Save Relationship. And we can see that Laura's been added to Jim's relationships. And if we click on Laura's name, we'll see it's created a record for her with the same address and Jim is listed under her relationships. You can also edit existing relationships by clicking on the column next to their name. Um, so let's say that we wanted to edit his relationship with Sally. We would just click here and we can either change the relationship type by selecting something new in the drop-down or we can delete the relationship altogether by clicking delete. And now we'll see that Sally has disappeared from Jim's relationships. Now it's important to remember that you're only deleting the link between their two records. We didn't actually delete Sally's record. The last thing that you can do with relationships is you can search for people based on their relationship roles and types under the search menu. So you can see here that you can search based on everybody in your data bank or just a selection of members that you have. Um, and then you can search based on their relationship type and role and click find. Next thing we're going to do is a multi-step advanced search. So this can be done um, under search personal. This is a standard table in everybody's data bank. Let's say that we want to um, do a two-step search, and in our search we want to first look for a list of people from St. Paul. And then from that list, for our second step, we want to remove all the people who are marked do not mail. Um, maybe we're sending out some sort of mailing. So to do that, um, we're going to do the first step of the search um, by selecting city equals, and then typing in St. Paul and then we'll click find. So we can see that we have 20 people that match that search criteria. So 20 people from St. Paul. Now again, I mentioned that we want to go back in and add another step to this search where we remove the people who are marked do not mail. So we're going to go back to search personal and we're going to choose one of these selection modes. Now, it's always going to default to new selection, so if you keep it on that, it's actually going to wipe out the first step you did and only show you the second step, and that's not what we want to do. We want to choose one of these other modes. The first option is the Add mode, and what that's going to do is it's going to take um, all the people who fit the criteria for the first step and all the people who fit the criteria for the second step, and it's going to put them all together in one big list. What filter is going to do is it's going to take your first and second step and it's only going to show you the people who fit both of those criteria. The last option is remove and that's going to take your initial list of people and it's going to remove from that list whatever you search on for your second step. You can also choose to remember the setting if you're doing the same search mode over and over again. So we're going to choose remove because we want to take out all those people who are marked do not mail and we're going to go down to the contact preferences and under postal mail we're going to select do not mail and then we're going to do find. So we'll see our list you'll remember had originally been 20 people. Well now it's gone down to 17 so there were three people on that list who were marked do not mail and it removed them for us. Now the nice thing with multi-step searches is you can always click on current search to remind yourself um, the steps that you've taken to get to where you are. 
So here we can see that our first step of the search was looking for people in St. Paul, and then the second step was to remove the people who were marked do not mail. And then the final result is always going to be at the bottom, and you can click on it to see the people. Now the other nice thing is that you can actually save your search and replay it again at a later time. So if we click Save, it's going to have us give the search a name. So we could call it St. Paul OK to Mail. You can put in a description. Um, you can choose a folder to save it in if you want to keep your saved searches organized. You can also choose if you want to allow others to replay the search. So when you're ready, click Save and it lets you know that the search has been saved and then we have to go access it. So to get to it, um, you come under the search menu all the way down to the bottom where it says saved. And here's our search right here called St. Paul OK to Mail. So if we click on it, it opens up this screen again and we can replay it by clicking the button. And you can watch as it goes through each step, it puts a little green checkbox next to it once it's completed. And then the final result is here at the bottom. Now, the most important thing to remember with Save Search is that you are only saving the search criteria, so the steps of the search. You're not necessarily saving that exact list of people. So if um, a week from now you come back and do the search, there might have been people that were added to this data bank who were from St. Paul. They would show up in the search results next time we do the search. Um, next thing we'll talk about is downloading. And you can do a download of um, any records that you have in your current search selection. So if we click selection, it shows we have 17 records selected. And let's say we want to download those records um, and maybe open them in Excel or some other program. We're going to go to selection download. And we're going to check off all the fields that we want to download. So if you were doing a mailing, like maybe a mail merge, um, you would want name and mailing data, anything else that you want to include. And then down at the bottom, you're just going to choose if you want a common delimited file or a tab delimited file. And you're going to choose if you are using Windows, Macintosh, or Unix. So then we click Download. And you can see that it gives us both a zip file and a text file. Um, usually the text file is good enough to use. You're just going to simply right click on it and you're going to save it um, to your desktop or wherever you want to save it on your computer and then open it up. Um, next thing we'll do is the roster function. And that again, um, you have to have a current selection of people in here, so we still have our 17 people selected. We're going to go to Selection Roster. And here, um, to create a roster, we're going to click on Member Roster. And just like on the download page, we're going to check off all of the fields that we want in our roster. And then we're going to choose what our output format is, whether we want to view it on the screen or if we just want to do a downloadable text file. And then we'll click Create Report. And here you can see our report showing up. Another useful thing under the roster feature is the mailing labels. Um, here you can create and print off labels right from your data bank. So you're just going to select your label type. Um, you're going to give the file a name. It saves it as a PDF. Um, you can choose any of these preferences listed. And then you'll click Submit. And you can see here's our PDF. And if we click on it, it'll open up and we can print it right off on our computer. This is the end of part, two, part three of Databank Basic Training. Please proceed on to the next section.